We got world heavyweight champion Devin Lorette in the house. Dr. Ray. Hello. Winter. Dr. Alex. Devin, as we proceed, is it okay if we have your permission to look at your wrist MRI? And publicly display all of it. 100%. Thank you so much. We're doing wrist and hand today, is that right? That's, That's right. right. Ooh, and we got we have we have better recording capabilities today, so we can <laughs> hope, see everything. And hopefully, no more calls from sexy wife on his phone. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's, I probably got the most comments last time. <laughs> um, all right, so a couple of things. So I looked over your wrist MRI. Um, a lot of destruction there as well, as you said. Uh, so what we're looking at is um, so right now. Uh, do, is there a way that he's able to see the pictures, or do we have to show him? Um, I'll, I can show them back and forth. All right. So basically, um, looking at your wrist, I'm kind of looking at it in what we call the coronal plane. So you're kind of looking at your hand like as if it's facing you, the palm of your hand's facing you. So, right. you know, I noticed that uh, obviously you got arthritis in your hands and your wrist. Um, it, it's kind of like, it's interesting because the way that your arthritis pattern is, it's, it's you've got a moderate to severe arthritis. Um, you've lost areas that are mostly of intermediate cartilage loss. There are some areas of up to high grade cartilage loss. Most of it's kind of like as you go towards the thumb, you know, like it almost seems like all your force is kind of directed towards the thumb side. And then some of the other side towards the owner side, we call it, you have a lot less force. I mean, there's still degeneration and, and stuff going on there, but it seems like it distributes out that way. Interesting enough, however your mechanics lots is of, going. Lots of rising going on. Yeah. <laughs> And he kind of <laughs> described that to me, so it makes sense. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like I don't even hardly train the bottom of my hand anymore. It's all up top. This is rise and top of my hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah and that's and that's where the force is, seems like it's mostly going. Um, so you've, you know, one of the things that I also noticed is you got a little bit of like degeneration and even maybe a little bit of chronic partial tearing in your scapholuminate ligament, which is. One of the, uh, one is it going to be connecting? There we go. The scapholuminate ligament, which is one of those where uh, it's like one of your supporting stabilizers in the bottom of your wrist. One of the bigger ligaments and things that can, you know, degenerate in your wrist. That's kind of like, like right, right at the bottom of there, like, it's like right, uh, right here. by the thumb side, kind of like over oh, here. Thumb side. Yeah, it's closer to the thumb side because we have what goes like the snuff box and it's like right in there. So it's at the base okay. of the wrist, right where the radius meets the wrist, where the joint articulates okay. mainly. Okay. Um, and you, you have little cysts kind of scattered everywhere. And, um, basically, you know, you get these little synovial areas where like fluid just kind of pops through into the bone. Whenever there's like, you know, high force or like degeneration and arthritis, you get little cysts in those areas to kind of indicate that there may be some, you know, but they call gang interosseous ganglia or just synovial cyst you formation. You see that right there, Devin, in the image? Yeah. Those are just yeah. signs of arthritis. It's kind of a common consequence. It doesn't necessarily mean you have pain. I mean, you obviously have pain from the arthritis, but the uh, cysts are all signs of pretty high, you know, intermediate to high grade disease. And you have that kind of scattered within, you know, your lunate as well as your scapho, which are two kind of like, you know, the kind of the bottom parts of your wrist bones. And you have it also scattered through that through other parts of your wrist as well, so it's pretty diffuse. You want to hear some good news? <laughs> what? Well, I mean, that sounds like everything's pretty good to me. Like, yeah. I don't hear anything. There, there is some good news here. We have some good <laughs> oh, really? news. Oh. Well. Okay, give me the good news. Well, check in the good news. Should I wait till I give him some of the bad okay, news let's first? Do a little bit more bad news. Let me, let me just finish the bad news. <laughs> so fresh in my mind. So you do have um, you have a predisposition um, to kind of tearing your triangular fiber cartilage because your ulnar bone is kind of like sitting up higher than your radius. We call it positive ulnar variance. And what that does is it can smash into your uh, triangular fiber cartilage. I don't know if it's related specifically to the arm wrestling or not, but you know, a lot of times you start seeing arthritis and triangular fiber cartilage tear from this and you have that. A pretty, like, show it on there too? Yeah, pretty like zoom in on this. full thickness tear through there. Like you see a fluid gap going right through it, like bam, like. Uh, so that's something that's just kind of there. It's been there. I mean, like I said, it could be related to this. It might not be related to it. And it's just part of the whole, like, <laughs> what's going on here. Um, one other bad news is, but, um, you've got, so your, your, your extensor carpial nares tendon, which is very commonly diseased and healthier people too. Um, it's like the tendon on the <laughs> on the side of your wrist 
it's like right here. I don't know if you ever notice any clicking or, or any discomfort there at all when you're doing certain types of exercises. I feel like, I feel like it, it always cracks, it always pops constantly. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's sometimes a bit better than others. If, if, I, if I get strong enough in my rise, it seems to go away a bit, but if I ever get like a little bit out of shape or a little bit weaker, I get beat up in practice. It's always out of joint, always crap, always pop. Part of it, part of it's probably the arthritic changes that you're starting to experience, like you know the 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 bone on bone changes that are happening to a certain extent. Um, some of it could be this tendon because it is diseased uh, and like, partially torn on the inside, but it also has the little seat, little sheath that kind of covers it. And it's ripped, so basically that thing can pop in and out during, you know, supination or like tw twisting your wrist. So you might be able to feel that happening as part of what you're feeling. But I think some of it, what we call crepitus, you might be having in your wrist, might be just from the arthritic change. Um, and that could be that could be one of the things you might be feeling, especially if you notice that it gets better with like, you know, as you use it, and then later on it starts to hurt more. And it's just that's just signs of arthritis. Um, and but, so there is some good news. <laughs> the rest of your tendons actually look really healthy. Like you got pretty yes. clean looking tendons. Uh, you know, as far as I can see, the supporting musculature all looks good. The, the, the basically the nerves around there, everything looks healthy. No weird, you know, inflammation or anything like that. I was expecting to find some really diseased thumb <laughs> tendons, but they look pretty good. So, so not only your flexor tendons, but your thumb as oh. well. The thumb tendon looked very. The tendons around the thumb looked very healthy as well. And normal, yeah. So most of your problems are like within the wrist bones, like just, just from grinding. I did tell him how you do a lot of blood flow work too with your hand for rehab. And so um, yeah. that's what I was talking about with the fluid packets, how that can help his, some of the tendon to stay healthy, but also just to get the fluid in and out of the joint. Oh. Yeah. Because of if he didn't, how it could kind of stay stagnant there, right? Yeah. I mean, think of it like this, you know, you've got narrow joint spaces now, right? So doing exercises with, that help with range of motion to keep your flexibility, range of motion, and also keeping fluid kind of going through the joint spaces is important because now you, since you have narrower space, it's, you know, you really need to keep that flow going. It would help just kind of like, just by thinking about it, right? If you had like larger, lots of, uh, lots of cartilage, you have lots of cushion, lots of fluid, you know, that can move around more easily, but you probably need more of that just to kind of keep you going and feeling good. So yeah, so I move it all the time. So that's good. It doesn't. That that sounds not too bad actually at all. I uh, I thought I was gonna get a worse prognosis. That I, I, that it sounds to me like my elbow and bicep are worse than my hand and wrist. Yeah, I mean your hand and wrist is still moderate to severe arthritis. <laughs> I mean, let's just put it this way: like it looks more severe on your elbow. So yes, it's technically better. But I mean, we're we're counting we're, we're counting beans here in terms of like. You know, you, you do have a little bit more time and a little bit more cartilage left in your wrist than I would say you have in your elbow, that's maybe, for sure. Maybe that gives you something to think about too for your wrist because you do so much with your hand back and forth, getting that blood flow. Yeah. Maybe you can start implementing some of that with the elbow even more too. It's very interesting. Hey, well, uh, well, hey, this has been, this. I feel like this is a good news story. To yeah. Me, I feel like, uh, I feel like you guys have given me invigorating news and I feel like I'm a younger man than I thought I was. I, mean, I, thought, I thought it was going to be way worse. I feel like I still got another 40 years of crushing people. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Let's hope you do, man. I wish you the I best. Took, sorry it took so long, but I'm glad we got to get through it. I'm really curious. I'm really curious to do follow-up ones. Right. I'm really curious. And, and you guys are going to hold on to those. Right. So um, they, I, I would love to do it again in like a year. Like just every year get it done. You know, it, it would be interesting to me to see, to see how the changes go. Post, especially post uh, the stem cells and see the regeneration and see, because we can yeah. compare side to side. We can see exactly what changed. Are we doing stem Very cell therapy curious. on the wrist as well? Very curious. I believe you're yeah. doing, you're doing stem cells in the shoulder, elbow, and wrist now, right? Yeah, um, uh, yeah. I'm, okay. doing, I'm doing them uh, mostly the elbow and wrist. That's gonna be every time. I did get them in the shoulder the first time I got it done. I, my shoulder's not my problem area. Yeah. I, my shoulders are fine. It's for me, elbows and wrist and hand. My hand gets like horrible pain at times. My wrist is always at a joint and all messed up in my elbow. I mean, geez, multiple surgeries itself messed up. So 
those are going to be the spots that I'm continuously going to be hitting for the next, um, yeah, well, forever. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to seeing the imaging that, follow up. Yeah, for sure. That follow up is next. We'll be ready. So yeah. hopefully by October of next year or November, we can get something. Thanks so much for your time, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Devin. My pleasure. Uh, we look forward to the next one. Right. Nice seeing you. Yeah. Keep rising. Yeah. Keep strong. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll talk soon. Stay in touch. All right. You remember this. Let's see how much bigger I get next year. Be careful. You're going to start to get fluid sacked. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, All right, man, take care. All right. Bye-bye. Dr. Alex. Dr. Ray. Signing off. See ya. <laughs>